welcome back to Duty's Daggers. We're doing a cut test with the Voss Deed Raccoon. This is their new version with their top lock, which is basically a compression lock with a button. And, uh, yeah, never done before, um, besides with the Spyderco Smock and a few other lesser known knives, but this is the first time it's really been done on a, uh, I don't know, a bigger scale, I guess. I don't know. Or on a on a popular platform, I suppose. Besides the smock. Um, very cool. So let's test it out. We got a 14C 28 end blade. My card of skills, and this knife comes in around 65 bucks. Um, which is a pretty good price, I would say. The blade geometry is nice and thin. Uh, this is pretty thin blade stock, pretty thin behind the edge. I think I measured it around 13, 14 thousandths. Um, so this should be a really good cutter. As long as this 14C28N holds a knife like it should, um, this could be a really, really great cutter. So starting off with some regular thickness cardboard here. Just gotta get this box apart. The clip is pretty good too. I've always liked Vostid's clips. They're low profile, they're inset, um, and they go in any any pants I'm wearing, they, they always fit in easily, so that's great. It's breezing through this cardboard very easily. I really like the blade shape here. Uh, this is such a, a versatile blade shape. It really does everything pretty well. Definitely a dropped point. Um, a little bit of straight and then some gradual, you know, nice gradual belly up to a drop down tip. Really good sharpening toil on this knife too. Excellent. Which also doubles as kind of a, a spot for you to choke up as well. I got a little piece of uh, triple thickness cardboard here. Going with the grain and then going against the grain the harder way. Both. Pretty freaking easy, man. You know, you tell you can tell that you're cutting through thicker cardboard, but it's you know barely any more effort than uh, the regular stuff. So this is a slicey one. This is a slicey knife. Now let's get the cutting board out. Getting to the tip, you know, it's not as easy as a one cliff or a sheep's foot would be, but not bad at all. You're not raising up super high to get to it and utility cuts are pretty easy and it does well with them do some turns piece of cake let's do a couple more real quick here yeah very good And what's next? I think it is Cecil Rope time. Oh, I was wrong. It's glove time. <laughs> Let's roll up the glove here and cut some leather. Pretty nice. That belly is nice and uh, useful here. Rocking back on the belly, pinching that leather between the edge and the surface of the cutting board. Very nice. Now it's seasonal rope time. I just noticed when I was cutting that rope that my middle finger, when I'm gripping the knife in a choked up hammer grip like this, actually is right on top of the button. And if you grip it, you're pushing the button. So that is definitely something to be aware of. Um, position your hand so that that doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, that is potentially an issue depending on how you're holding the knife. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of a thing. You know, the, the button here is 
lower than um, most other button locks. Most other button locks are more toward the pivot, so that finger is, is farther away from that finger um, and way less likely to be, be pushed. Um, in fact, most button locks, it's impossible to disengage by gripping unless you're really trying. This one, very, very easy. So be aware of that definite possible issue. It did great with the Cecil rope, by the way. Just popped them real nice. Some thick rubber tubing. Piece of cake. And let's get to the strap. Will it make it all the way through? Let's find out. Making sure not to push that button. And we got a little over halfway, not bad at all. Let's do one more. About the same. Not bad. We'll try it again after we do a stropping. And let's see where our edge is at. Okay, alright. That first cut was... It looked like it was good. It was actually tearing some of it, though, instead of slicing the paper. This stuff's really thin, this paper. It's like magazine paper. So, it's yeah, it's definitely having some trouble. Which, yeah. I mean, it's to be expected. 14C, 28N does not have great edge retention. Its primary, um, you know, its main strong attribute is a stainlessness, not edge retention. So that's what you're getting. So let's give it a stropping. I don't know. Actually, you know what? Let's do the uh, the edge killer first. See how, see how much that uh, that dulls it even further. And then stick around because we're going to do the edge killer rope again after the stropping and then do cut, uh, cutting the paper so we can see just how badly the, uh, the edge killer kills edges. So it made it through, but it was fraying and a lot. Definitely required a lot of sawing to get through. And now this edge is definitely, definitely gone. See, it's ripping the paper, not cutting it. So yeah, um, now let's strap it again. So I think I think this 14C performed pretty much like I would expect 14C uh, to perform. You know, it's uh, like I said, it's not great edge retention, um, but it you know it cut everything I wanted it to. And it just wasn't quite cutting paper at the end, but I mean again, that's very thin magazine paper. So I mean, you could still easily be using this knife. Um, I don't know, for like a week or so, before you really had to do something about the edge. And here's a freshly strapped edge, very nice and sharp. Now let's go back to the edge killer rope after a spine whack test, which we passed very strong. So let's go, oh wait, no, we're gonna do the strap again. Let's see if we get farther. Yeah, almost all the way through with the freshly stropped edge. And let's touch it up again real quick before we go to the edge killer. And you are gonna see the destructive power of this edge killer rope. So we got a very nice, very, very sharp, freshly stropped edge and let's see what it does. It actually cut really well. Usually the rope like dissolves and falls apart, but it actually kind of maintained almost a little clump and it cut it way faster also. 
Um, but the real question is, what did it do to the edge? And yeah, it definitely did some damage. Absolutely. A lot of damage. So let's strap it up one more time. The, you know, this, I said it already, but this blade shape really is excellent. This is such a good budget knife blade shape because it's good at everything. This could be a one and done knife for somebody. Uh, you know, if you're not addicted to buying knives like I am, <laughs> it could be. And we're back to nice and very nice and sharp. There we go. There it is, folks. The raccoon with the top lock. Overall, I like it. Um, you know, it feels like a $65 knife. Um, it just has that, that feeling to it, which is to be expected, you know. But, you know, the D10 is nice and snappy. Um, the, you know, the fall shutness, the, the smoothness and the pivot is uh, very, very loose. And I mean, not loose. It's, uh, it's very free swinging. Um, the lockup is strong. It passes the spine whack. I like the clip a lot. The micarta is uh, it's on the cheaper side, feel you know, feeling wise. Um, but yeah, there's other versions of the knife too without micarta, I believe. Um, and that's pretty much it. It did pretty well on the test, that's for sure. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like the video before you leave, and I'll see you soon.